Good morning. We are celebrating the fourth week of the Easter season, and we are at its midpoint on uh, Wednesday. And uh, what I would like to just briefly review for everyone today is our upcoming uh, Feast of St. Joseph the Worker, which is May 1st, which will be this coming Saturday. And of course, uh, this being the year of St. Joseph, uh, our attention uh, is, I hope, more uh, focused on the person and the life of St. Joseph, always in relation to the life of Jesus, for whom God chose him to be the foster father, and of our Blessed Mother, his chaste uh, spouse, and together they form the Holy Family, of course. But this particular feast is relatively new in the life of the Church. Uh, Pope Pius XII established this feast in 1955, and one has to go back and look at the history secular history at that time, especially in Western Europe. Of course, communism was going great guns. They had uh, overrun Eastern Europe and the communist bloc had formed there. And uh, in the country of Italy, the single largest political party at that time was the Communist Party. And they uh, very much made a big deal of uh, their uh, marches and demonstrations, but especially on May Day, which was customarily May 1st. And of course, atheistic communism is directly opposed uh, to the Catholic faith. And uh, Europe was struggling mightily at that time, trying to uh, deal with the spread of communism. And it Europe wasn't the only place, and so our Holy Father, Pope Pius XII, very prudently uh, decided to counter this kind of spreading popularity of communism uh, in the West by establishing for the Catholic Church and literally for the world itself a much better way to celebrate May 1st, May Day, and that is by celebrating St. Joseph, patron of workers. And so the Holy Father held up uh, for the Catholic Church and for the world, literally, the ideal of who the worker should be, man or woman. And it is St. Joseph, a man who trusted wholly and entirely in God's will for him and his holy family, and who obediently because of his trust in God's will, he obediently fulfilled God's will by being the guardian of the Lord Jesus as a child and young man and of our Blessed Mother. And in every way, he provided for them by the work which uh, he did. He was a carpenter and a builder of things. And so it was a noble profession which St. Joseph very uh, conscientiously and, and uh, with great devotion fulfilled and no doubt taught to the young boy, young man Jesus as he was growing up since Jesus was known to be the son of the carpenter. And uh, the reason Pope Pius XII established this beautiful feast, as I said, was not just to counteract communism, that was bad enough, but to teach by way of using this great saint's life and work, teach all the nobility of work, and teach both employers and employees the right and morally good way to form that uh, worker-employer relationship. One is just in the wages one pays to one empl one's employees, but as employees, they have an equally weighty moral responsibility to do an honest day's work for one's pay. And so as we come to this coming Saturday, 
keep that in mind. It would be a good day, if, all, if at all possible, uh, to go to Mass and uh, honor St. Joseph as the patron of workers. But uh, look to how St. Joseph fulfilled his duty as father and as provider for his family. It's a marvelous example of, again, the nobility of honest work, but it's also a marvelous example for both employers and employees of that morally good and just relationship that they should have, which is mutually beneficial uh, in temporal terms, but also it's spiritually enriching and uplifting for both to do good work and to do an honest day's work and to be fair and just with one's employees in every way. And that is what St. Joseph models for us on this great feast of May 1st. So as we continue to celebrate the beautiful Easter season, let us look to St. Joseph in this year of St. Joseph as that model father, spouse, worker, and most importantly, the patron of all of us as Catholics in our church.